Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, guys? How we doing? Man, it's here. And today, we're answering your questions. Today's question comes from Instagram. And the question is from Coach Dawson Anderson. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. His question is, Advice for a younger coach who wants to open a training facility and build a program like yours. Well, I appreciate that you want to build a program like ours. Thank you. Um, advice. Okay, uh, let's talk about, let's talk a little bit, and this could be a long video, I'll try to keep it short, but let's just talk about how I got into Antonelli Baseball, how I started it, and some of the keys that I think have helped us uh, grow it, okay? Okay. Um, so I started the program in, two, in the fall of 2013. I was released during the 2013 season. And when I got home, I started Antonelli Baseball. I knew I wanted to coach. I knew I wanted to coach young kids. I knew I wanted to pass on the things that I learned to players and help them get to, the, to just a higher level, whether that's you know make their high school team or their college team or get drafted or play in the big leagues. Whatever it is they wanted to do, I wanted to help them because I'd been there. That was my goal my whole life. And I thought that I learned things along the way that I could that I could help them with. Uh, my dad was also a coach. He coached travel ball. And so, you know, I used to help out with his practices all the time. And I, when I was done, I said, why don't we just start our own program? And so I started my program and, you know, my dad came over and coached and still coaches with us and helps me run it and all that stuff. So that's how we started. And we started off by basically the team that he had been coaching with. Uh, when he decided to come and we did our own program, a lot of his players from his team came over. Uh, and then we had another one of my coaches from when I was younger. He had a program uh, that he was getting rid of. And he said, hey, I've got a group of kids that want to come you know, play. Can they come play with you? I said, yeah, sure thing. So we start off with three teams. All right? That's where we started. Three teams, probably about 39 kids, 13 kids per team, 14 kids per team, say 40 kids. That's how we started that first year. Okay. And then from there we ended up growing and we grew pretty fast. But let me tell you the, the kind of the things that I think were important. Uh, the first thing you asked about a training facility and a program, for me, that's two separate things. Uh, so we we don't have, I don't have a, a training facility as far as my own building uh, that is just mine. So we rent all of our space. So we rent the turf field, we rent batting cages. I've got my cage to do lessons in and stuff like that. And so that's probably for a different video because there's a lot that comes with having your own facility. Um, but I can help you with the program, okay? So how do we get our program to go from three teams to 11 teams very, very quickly? And we've been basically at 11 teams for the last bunch of years. We could go to 15 teams and I could probably go to 20 and I might be able to go to 25. I could probably build the program as big as I want, but I, I don't want to build it and just take every single kid from around that wants to play with us. Um, and so like this year we had, I don't know, we had 400 and something kids at tryouts, probably more than that, probably. And, uh, and not everyone, not even close to everyone makes a team. We have 11 teams. That's all we have basically every year. Okay. All right. So how do we get to the point? How do we get there to where we could have 11 teams, but have, you know, 25 teams if we wanted to a couple things. I think one, you have to be doing it because you enjoy coaching, helping players get better, helping players succeed on the field. I think that's number one. Um, I always feel like, you know, baseball is such a hard sport. I know the feelings, the feeling of not doing well, of being released, of being cut, of not making teams. Like that happened to me a lot during my career. It's horrible. It's a horrible feeling. And, um, you know, I want to help kids not have to go through that, right? Like that, that when I see a kid get better and a kid make, the, the team, whatever team it is they're they're trying to make, high school or college or whatever, that makes me feel really good. And I, I feel good about helping players get better and get, you know, fulfill their goals. And so I think that's number one. You have to do it because of that. You can't do it because, um, I don't know, you think that you're going to become a millionaire and, and be really wealthy coaching travel baseball. You're not going to, okay? I'll tell you that right now. That is not why you want to do it. Um, you can't do it because you want to be the greatest coach of all time, go down in history as the greatest travel ball coach of all time. I mean, I guess maybe you, I, I don't know. They don't, I don't think they have a hall of fame for uh, travel ball coaches. Some people think they do, but they don't, okay? So you can't do it for that. It's, it has to be all about the players and the kids. And you have to believe that. And then you have to get a bunch of people that also believe that. You need to get a coaching staff that believes that. Um, 
And so you need good coaches, solid coaches, people around you, because you're not going to be able to do everything. You can't coach every team, right? I learned that quickly, although I'm very involved with all of our teams. I go to all our practices. Um, you know, I don't miss any practices or any of that stuff. But I can't be at every game because there's 11 teams and there's one of me. And so you need people that you can trust and people that are going to deliver the same message and are doing it for the same reasons as you. And so that's why if you look at our coaching staff, it's the, it's been the same coaches that have been with us pretty much since we started the program, right? It's all the people that have that have the same philosophy, the same ideas. They coach because they enjoy coaching. They want to help kids get better. Um, so you have to find people that want to do that. And once you do, that's very very helpful. So I think that is huge. Um, if you do a good job, if you care about the kids, I think if you care about the kids, you have a good staff that cares about the kids and you help them get better, you're going to, you will grow because people will talk about your program. That's the biggest thing. Most of the players, I think, that show up to our tryouts um, that want to play for us, it's because other people have, other players or families have talked to them about the experience that they get from us. And usually it's very good coaches. They really care about the kids and they get the kids better. Um, if you care about the kids and you can't get anyone better, you won't get as many people. If you get people better, but you're an a-hole and people can tell that they don't like you and they don't think you care about anyone, you won't get as many kids. If you can do both, you're going to grow your program really, really quickly, in my opinion. Um, and so I think that's the biggest focus, getting the kids better, caring about the kids, put it together. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of other things that go into it, but I think that's the biggest thing um, when it comes to developing the program. Uh, the other thing that has helped, and uh, I, again, I think the biggest thing is word of mouth. But I do think being able to let people know what you're doing. So that's why we film a lot. We have a YouTube channel. I have an Instagram uh, page, whatever you call it. Um, and so people need to know what's going on. And so that's been really helpful is having a YouTube. I started a YouTube channel a long time ago. And I remember when we first started, started our program that first year, I didn't even know what Instagram was. I remember if you go back, if you go way, way back, go way, go way back on Instagram on our Instagram to like our very first post. I believe our very first post, I, I think we were, we had blue shirts on with, a, we were called Northeast Elite, I think. We were Northeast Elite for like seven and a half hours and then we changed the anti baseball. Um, but I remember I put the first post up on Instagram and I, I put it up and I was like, what the hell is Instagram? I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I get, we want to get our stuff out there. I have YouTube, I'll put it on Instagram. And, uh, and kids were making fun of me. I get like three likes on my post and they were like, dude, you don't you have to use hashtags and all this stuff. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, anyways, now we have, you know, 80, 80,000 followers on there. And on YouTube, we have like 160,000 subscribers. And so that no doubt helps. Um, it's not number one, right? But it does help. It helps spread the word, but it also lets people see what are you doing? And they can get into our practice. So like we film practices. You can you can see like what does an anti like baseball practice look like? We film games. What does an anti like baseball game look like? You I film me. You know like what do I what am I like? What's my personality personality like? Do I know what the hell I'm talking about? And so I think all that is, that also will help. Okay, so we could sit here and talk forever and ever and ever, but just start with that. Okay, start with the few things that we talked about there. I think that'll at least get you started. Good luck. Thank you for the question. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Give it a thumbs up. If you have a question, put it in the comment section below, and maybe I'll pick your question for my next video. That's all we have. We'll talk to you later.